you are the average of the five people that you hang around with the most. And my friends, it is the absolute truest statement that you can consistently remind yourself with. So today we're going to talk about the crab mentality. We're going to talk about ways to evaluate your top five. And if you don't know what the top five are, don't worry, I'm going to help you. And then we're going to talk about how to bring builder uppers into our life and how to quietly back away from the people who tear us down. Hey there, I'm Amber Harper, former burned out teacher turned teacher burnout coach, dedicated to helping other teachers like you to grow through your burnout and take your next best steps toward what you want from your career in education and in life. After an embarrassing emotional breakdown in front of my teacher besties, I knew something needed to change, and that something was me. I decided that I wasn't going to settle for burnout as my sentence as a teacher, mom, wife, or friend, and I knew it was going to take way more than practicing conventional self-care to make the progress I wanted to make. No amount of manicures, bottles of wine, or bubble baths was going to save this girl. Fast forward to a few years later, and I've used everything I've learned about teacher burnout and personal development to write a book, build a course, and lead a community of burned-in teachers who refuse to settle for a life of burnout as their forever reality. I've used my burnout as an opportunity to become an active participant in my life, in the classroom, and here on the mic, using all that I've learned to teach kids and serve teachers. And you can do the same. The Burned In Teacher Podcast is one part burnout and all other parts action, inspiration, and support to help you grow through your burnout and live a happier, more fulfilled career and life. So take a deep breath, my friend, because you're about to take your next best step to becoming a Burned In Teacher. Let's dive in. This episode is brought to you by Blinkist, my personal favorite way to listen to books in short blinks. Hear me out. It really is more knowledge in less time. What Blinkist does is it takes your favorite personal development, biographies, or autobiographies, and more, and boils them down into the most important points of the book. Blinkist is perfect for curious yet busy people, like us teachers, who love to learn yet don't have or make the time to sit down and read. This app offers a way for busy professionals to understand books and podcasts, in most cases, less than 15 minutes. I mean, how many times have you climbed into bed at the end of a busy day with a great book and the best of intentions, and before you make it to the third sentence, you're passing out? I've been there, I see you. You can read or listen to books, find your next read based on your interests, and even take advantage of new shortcasts. These are key insights from popular podcasts too. So if you want to be more knowledgeable, successful, a better parent, happier, or learn how to be your best self at work and in life, Blinkist is for you. This app is how I have listened to some of my favorite books like Atomic Habits, Think and Grow Rich, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, and so many more books that I reference all the time in my daily life. 95% of Blinkist members read significantly more than before. 91% create better habits. 87% have more positive changes in their lives. And you know, that's what I'm all about. As a BIT podcast listener, you get a seven-day free trial of Blinkist. And believe me, when you begin using this app, you will never read books the same way again. Go to www.bit.ly slash B-I-T Blink 7 to get seven days free from Blinkist, my favorite app for learning so I can take my next best step to becoming and staying my best self. That's bit.ly slash bitblink7. Burn on. Hey there, Burned In Teachers. Welcome to episode 141 of the Burned In Teacher podcast. We're now a few weeks into June and what I love about re-releasing this episode is that 
especially if you are on summer break and you are able to take yourself out of that teacher space, your classroom, your hallway, um, the actual building that you work in from day to day. Um, when, when you're separated from that space, I think that's going to allow for a lot of clarity as you are considering the people that you either intentionally or unintentionally um, spend time with and whether or not they are tearing you down or building you up. This episode is all about helping you to really pay attention to who you're spending the most time with and how they are affecting your mindset and your action steps as you are someone who is trying to grow through your burnout, someone who is trying to do things different for the sake of seeing different results, someone who doesn't want to become a victim of the career that that we've chosen for ourselves, someone who decides to look at challenges as opportunities for growth and change. And not everybody has that mindset. And maybe you haven't quite decided if you are going to change your mindset and take different actions. And you're just kind of curious about what this burned in process is all about. But I, I can tell you from personal experience, who you hang around with matters. It's, it's in a lot of cases, it's everything. Um, I mean, you think about who you pay attention to on social media and what news outlet you watch, if you watch the news at all. You know, um, the, the music you choose to listen to. Everything that we take in typically is um, equal or or even less than what it is that we put out, you know, and and it matters. So I, I really want to encourage you to, you know, let this episode sort of wash over you, maybe listen it, listen to it again. I definitely encourage you to get out a notebook and a pen and take some notes and and write down these people, you know, who who it is that during the school year you spend time with or who you are choosing to spend time with outside of the school year. You know, who who is it that you will see over the summer and you're going to intentionally be around? Um, this is really a great time for you to pay attention to those things, to those habits, to, you know, um, to those conversations that you're having with people and which ones you're choosing to involve yourself in and which ones you're choosing to step away from. So speaking of paying attention to who it is that you're surrounding yourself with, um, if you're on my email list, you've probably seen some emails come through about the Educate and Rejuvenate uh, online summit that's taking place at wifeteachermommy.com. And I'm going to include a link in the show notes, but if you go to bit dot lee slash educate and rejuvenate you can sign up to attend this two-day conference it is virtual and it's only five bucks um so educate and rejuvenate is the live virtual conference for pre-k through sixth grade teachers and homeschool parents to work smarter not harder and live their best lives um so during this conference you're going to soak up a wide variety of inspiration unique teaching tips innovative educational strategies and mindset hacks from from seasoned teachers like me, I'm keynoting this event, um, children's book authors, professional motivational speakers, homeschool moms, and life coaches, all from the comfort of your home. So for less than a Starbucks latte, you can surround yourself with people who really want to help you to be as successful as you can in the 2022-23 school year. So you're going to get two full days of sessions that you can access for 24 hours and watch anytime. You're going to see um, a couple of keynotes from me, one from me, and one from Brianna Richardson um, of Honest Teacher Vibe. She's hilarious, by the way. <laughs> um, and 21 more sessions to choose from on June 28th and 29th. So mark your calendar. Go to bit.ly slash educate and rejuvenate. To sign up, pay your $5, and you're going to get what I've already mentioned plus many other things. You'll see all of the details on this page. So I will actually be um, I will be doing my, my keynote live virtually, and then the rest of the sessions are pre-recorded. So if you tuned into my episode with Kelsey Sorensen on April 25th, she is actually the creator of Wife Teacher Mommy. Um, we talk a lot more in, de- in depth about this conference and where it came from and, and her teaching journey and her burnout story. So um, I'm really excited about this. It's going to be a really impactful conference. So again, go to bit.ly slash educate and rejuvenate. All right, now let's dive into this episode all about why who you hang out with the most matters. Burn on. You are the average of the five people that you hang around with the most. And my friends, it is the absolute 
truest statement that you can consistently remind yourself with. So today we're going to talk about the crab mentality. We're going to talk about ways to evaluate your top five. And if you don't know what the top five are, don't worry, I'm going to help you. And then we're going to talk about how to bring builder uppers into our life and how to quietly back away from the people who tear us down. So I want to get started today by letting you know that this is an excellent episode for burned and over it teachers. So you teachers who are struggling with being uh, surrounded by negativity, apathy, maybe you're working in a workplace, um, even though we're teaching virtually right now, where people are negative and consistently focusing on the challenges rather than the solutions. If that is you, then this is this episode is going to be very, very helpful for you. I'm also going to touch on teacher brand a little bit. So if you are unfamiliar with Understand Your Teacher Brand, directly after finishing this episode, I want you to go to episode 45. So that was from October 7th, and all of the month of October was dedicated to the words, the actions, the beliefs that we have surrounding and what make up our teacher brand. So I want you, that's your homework today. <laughs> after you finish this episode, if you haven't been following the Vernon Teacher Podcast this season. So today we're going to talk about why who you hang out with the most matters. And I'm going to start this episode with a story, okay? I want you to imagine that you are walking down a beach and you see crabs running around everywhere, all right? And you catch one or your kid catches one. And you put it into a bucket just to marvel at how cool or how weird they look. And as you're marveling at it in the bucket, it climbs out eventually, right? Did you know that crabs can climb? They can. As you watch this crab, it climbs out of the bucket and it scurries back into the ocean, okay? Then later on, you get excited about this. It was so cool to catch a crab, put it in a bucket. So you run back out to the beach and there are more crabs and you've gotten better at catching them. So you catch five or six of them and you put them all in the bucket and you wait to watch them climb out. But as you wait and as you watch and as you marvel and as you kind of giggle at just how silly and weird they look, <laughs> you notice that as one tries to climb out, the rest of the crabs start to pull it back down. As you continue to watch them, the same crab tries to crawl out again. And this almost seems upsetting to the other crabs and they pull it back down. More crabs pull it back down. And you start to get worried for the crab because they're getting rather um, violent <laughs> with their behavior. And so you let the crabs out and let them all scurry back down to the ocean. What this story represents is what's called the crab mentality. And I know that I've talked slightly about this here on the podcast. I've definitely talked about it in my keynote. But the crab mentality goes that if you were to put a crab in a bucket by itself, it could climb out easily. It might take some time, but it would crawl out. However, if you put the same crab in the same bucket with other crabs, when it would try to cr climb out, it would get pulled back down. If it would continue to try, eventually the crabs would break its arms and eventually the other crabs would kill it if it continued to try to get out of the bucket. And unfortunately, in our life, we may find people in our, in our work environment and even in our families or our friend circles, friendship circles, that when we talk about big dreams or we talk about our challenges or we talk about even solutions, we have people in our lives that continue to remind us of where we are and where we should stay and that we are powerless and we cannot change our situation. And this is why in a lot of different situations in our lives, um, you know, whether it's um, for us, it was moving um, it could be a weight loss journey. You decide to get healthier and you talk about it and people say, well, yeah, this is a phase or yeah, I know I tried that before too. It didn't work. Or, you know, they remind you of, of their weight loss journey and how it failed or, or whatnot. But this can also happen when you want to do something big and different and scary and you are talking about opportunities that maybe haven't been brought up before. 
I call these people terror downers because just like the crabs in the bucket, the people that are continuing to remind us of where we are and how things will not change, those people are tearing us down just like the crabs in the bucket. And when you are at this stage of never settling, and that's what, you know, this episode goes back to this month's theme, never settle. When you decide not to settle for the status quo of being a burned out, miserable, frustrated uh, teacher, when you decide to do things differently and talk differently and carry yourself differently and believe different things and say different things and even hang out with different people, the crabs in your bucket are going to try to keep you the same. And there are even times whenever you you talk about your dreams or your goals or things you want to change or you start to talk about solutions where people aren't necessarily negative, but their comments or their um, responses are are out of worry and out of love. Are you sure you want to do that? That's really scary. Or gosh, you know, there's a lot of risk involved. Or they will remind you of how doing things differently can be uh, quote unquote dangerous. You know, of course, if we were putting ourselves in a life or death situation, um, we would want people to remind us um, to be safe. However, sometimes in the essence of trying to keep us safe, people end up just trying to keep us the same. And that's where the agents of same come in. You know, these those are those crabs in our head, right? Those those agents of same, those things that we tell ourselves that keep us where we are. Everybody's situation is different. Everybody's circle and school and district and, and grade level, you know, groups and teams are different. Um, they're very dynamic. But what it's important for you to know is how to identify those terror downers and to figure out ways to bring people who I call builder uppers into your life because just like I said at the beginning of this episode you are the average of the five people that you hang around with the most and this can be really hard because as I ask you these questions to evaluate who's a terror downer and who's a builder upper in your life you may have to quietly back away from those terror downers and these could be people that you have associated yourself with for a very long time and I'm talking about your grade level team people that you collaborate with that teacher down the hall you know people that you normally talk to in the teacher's lounge could be your friendship circle outside of school and even family members and I can tell you that I've struggled with terror downers in every single one of these circles family, friends, and work colleagues. And it's challenging. And it's hard to come to these realizations that the people that you have associated yourself with have actually been keeping you in that bucket. Let's face it. This year has been another doozy. And now that I'm back in the classroom, it has been more important than ever for me to stay focused on my core values, mindset, goals, and my habits. As a teacher in today's world, it seems like there is always something new and hard that can easily throw our lesson and or life plans off track. But when I began to burn out many years ago for the fifth time in my six year teaching career, I told myself that crying to and from work, grading, prepping and planning on nights and weekends and Sunday scaries was just part of being a good teacher. The current challenges we're facing in education today are monumental. All of these challenges make balancing teaching and your everyday life seem unmanageable. Until now, teacher burnout has been hacked. In Hacking Teacher Burnout, I share my eight-step process I designed to help myself and other teachers navigate our way out of burnout. You see, out of my rock bottom burnout moment, I learned ways to focus on what I can control while learning ways to let go of the things that are out of my control. My book shines a light on burnout as an opportunity for growth and change, and in it, I empower you to become a burned-in teacher, a happier, more fulfilled, efficient, and effective person in the classroom and in life. In Hacking Teacher Burnout, you will learn the steps you can take to discover your burnout type. Did you know everyone has a type? Take actions that are best for you depending on your type. Move through burnout rather than fight against it. Make time for things that bring you growth and joy and thrive, not just survive, personally and professionally. And of course, to prepare for hardship before it hits and to conquer it when it does. And right now, you can download chapter one for free. That's right, you can start your journey out of burnout using step one of my process on the house. 
Go to burnedinteacher.com slash free chapter today to get your first chapter on me. And there's no better time. After the year we've had, we deserve to use what I have designed to believe, think, say, and do different things in order to see different results in our lives. Go to burnedinteacher.com slash free chapter to get your free chapter today. You won't be sorry. Burn on. So what I want to offer you today are three questions that I want you to ask yourself when you are evaluating whether or not the top five people that you currently hang around with the most, whether they are terror downers or if they are builder uppers, okay? They're kind of either or questions, so there are three of them. Ready? And don't worry, these will be in the show notes. Number one, when I open up and ask for help, do they instead tell me how much worse they have it than me? Or when I open up and ask for help, do they help me to seek solutions rather than focus on the challenges that are surrounding me? All right? Because if they are minimizing your struggles and instead maximizing theirs on top of yours and how much worse they have it, that's a terror downer. But if they're helping you to seek solutions or they're empathizing with you and they're saying, oh my gosh, that sucks so badly. I'm sorry that you're dealing with that. Here's what I would do, or here's been my experience with a similar situation. That's a builder upper, all right? Here's number two. Do they make me feel crazy or stupid when I talk about my dreams or my goals? Or do they get me excited and even check in with me when it comes to my goals? Do they say, hey, you talked about this thing the other day. How's that going, right? Are they creating a conversation around growth or are they creating a conversation on how silly it was that I even brought up brought up this option or this opportunity? All right? Terror downer or builder upper? Third, do they remind me or say things like, this is the way it is. Things won't change. You just need to learn to deal with it. This is just how teaching is. Or instead, are they saying things that empower me to think deeply, dream big, and help to ignite a fire for teaching and living? This is both inside and outside of school. Terror downer or builder upper. All right. So what I want you to do is I want you to evaluate the current your current top five. So write them down. In this list, you don't have to show me. You don't have to show your partner. You don't have to show anybody. This is between you, yourself, and God, right? <laughs> Make a list of the people that you hang around with the most. Who do I talk to on the phone? Who am I texting the most often? Who am I on Zoom with the most or Marco Poloing? These are the people that even virtually you are associating with the most, okay? This could be your mom. This could be your friends from school. This could be your friends from high school that you still hang out with. Um, It can be anybody that you consistently are around the most or that you talk to the most, all right? Write them down. And this doesn't have to be five. It can be six or seven, okay? Then I want you to ask yourself these three questions about each of these people. All right, and if all of them are builder uppers, then man, you have got it good. Good for you, all right? But if they're not, then we have to start thinking about ways that we can um, build some distance between us. And it doesn't have to be rude. I think I've talked about this on a past podcast. It doesn't have to be rude. It doesn't have to be harsh. It doesn't have to be brash. It can just be you not texting them as often. It could be you not going to the teacher's lounge as often. It could be you not going intentionally to their classroom. And if they come to your classroom to um, come and complain and vent about the latest drama that they've, you know, been involved in, then you just say, you know, that it's it's sad that you're going through that. I, I you know, that stinks. But I'm really sorry. I have to get to work on this because this is my time to get this done. Okay. Um, so you just you empathize with them, but then you say, I'm sorry, I can't. And maybe you don't even apologize. You just say, I have this to work on right now, so we'll have to talk about this later. All right? Now, the reason this is so important is because the more that you bring these builder uppers into your life, these people that help you to seek solutions, that help you to dream big, that help you to think outside the box, that help you to create the change that you need to see in your world, you are going to see such tremendous growth in your mindset, in your beliefs, in your daily actions, in your habits. They are going to be the sunshine in your life on a cloudy day. The last thing that we need in our world when we are struggling, when we are challenged by something, whether it be a global pandemic or a personal challenge, is more clouds. We need people that bring light into our lives. 
And when you have someone on the other end of your phone that you know you can call no matter what, and they will try to help you rather than minimize you, you they're going to push you out of that bucket. They're going to push you out. They're going to lift you up. Those are the people that you need in your life, burned in teacher. And I'm telling you, they are out there. You sometimes have to seek to find. Sometimes they're not going to be right in front of your face. They may have been people that you have not paid a whole lot of attention to because you have been, your clarity has been fogged by all of the negativity, by all of the same conversations about how hard things are and how terrible things are. All right. But I guarantee you, when you start looking for those builder uppers, you will find them. And that goes back to something else I've talked about, the reticular activating system. When you believe that there are people out there that are positive and that can influence you in a different way, you're going to find them. It might not be in your school district. It might be through another podcast, through this podcast. It might be through social media. It might be in another district. When you decide that you're not going to hang around with terror downers anymore, or at least you're not going to hang around with them as much because like I said, sometimes we don't get to control who we teach with or who our family members are. But we can choose to look for people that are going to build us up. And the more we look, the more we will find them. And here's what I want you to do to find those people. I want you to use your five senses. So I want you to look around. I want you to walk through the hallways of your school and I want you to think about the way that you feel when you walk by somebody else's classroom. When they walk around the corner, how do they make you feel? I want you to listen to what they say and how they respond to their students and to other teachers or what you've just heard as they've been talking to somebody else in the copy room, all right? I want you to smell. I don't literally want you to smell them, but I want you just to kind of sniff around, just kind of Pay close attention to their teacher brand, how students talk about them. Maybe ask, you know, hey, did you have Mr. So-and-so down the hall? And what? how do they talk about that person, all right? So I want you to look, listen, smell. I want you to taste. (laughs) We're also not tasting teachers here. But what I mean is I want you to pop your head into their classroom and just say, hey, how are you doing today? to these teachers that you haven't really talked to before, but they seem to be people who could be builder-uppers in your life. Just pop your head in, give it a little taste, say, hey, how are you doing? And see what happens. And by doing that, you're reaching out to touch somebody new. All right, so when you use your five senses to kind of evaluate teachers' brands and how they could be a builder-upper in your own life, you are allowing that space to meet new people to bring new people into your top five. And it all starts with you paying attention, using your five senses, and being aware of who is in your life and why and how they are affecting you and your burnout. And my friends, I'm telling you already, if you have not joined the Burned In Teacher Facebook community at community.burnedinteacher.com, there are hundreds of teachers in there ready to build you up. I have to tell you, during a Burned In Teacher forum that we just had in the Burned In Teacher Tribe membership, One of the tribe members, she said, Amber, I just happened to realize that I have been teaching for close to 20 years. And other than my first year teaching, I have never had a mentor. Never. I've been mentoring others, but I've never had anybody that has helped to guide me to think differently and to do differently and to keep me accountable and to help me implement strategies to be a happier, more fulfilled teacher. I'm learning so much about myself. So today, what I hope is that as you've listened, you are able to even in your mind make a list of people who could possibly be terror downers, who are builder uppers in your life, the questions you can ask yourself to determine who they are, and to also look, ask yourself those questions about different people that you could bring into your life. Because who you hang out with the most matters. And it will determine how quickly or if ever you get out of burnout because the people who are building you up are going to push you along that journey out of burnout so much faster and it's going to be so much more fun than if you are fighting against the crabs in the bucket that are continually pulling you down. Nobody wants to be in a bucket full of crabs. Nobody. Nobody deserves that. And hey, you know, maybe you realize that you've been a terror downer and maybe this episode is helping you realize that 
maybe you've been minimizing other people who have come to you for struggles or maybe you've been throwing fuel on the fire and you know keeping people the same in that frustrated burned out anxious state and it's okay because when you know better you do better and that's what these questions are for and that's what this story was for and that's why I want you to focus on who you hang out with the most because the quicker you bring those builders up builder uppers into your life the quicker you can get out of burnout. All right, take a deep breath because you just took another step to becoming a burned in teacher. I'll see you next week. Burn on. If you enjoyed today's podcast episode, you can head over to burnedinteacher.com where you can access the entire vault of burned in teacher podcast episodes and more information about ways I want to help you go from burned out teacher to burned in human. If you enjoyed today's episode, I would be so grateful if you would head over to iTunes and leave a review and a rating about the Burned and Teacher podcast. Until next time, take a deep breath because you just took another step to becoming a Burned and Teacher. Burn on. <laughs>